Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yeah, Aaron Gilmore. Uh, I'm an NGD student uh, at the University of Strathclyde, specifically the Centre for Ultrasonic Engineering in Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, and today I'll give a quick little overview of you into our research group search, talk about some of the motivations behind the decisions uh, in some of the crawlers that we design, um, talk about the paper, which is Robot Position for Quality Assurance, the usage case that we had in mind when developing it, uh, how we process the data and how we experimentally validated. This paper was submitted in, I think, December of last year and accepted in March. So we've moved on to new pastures since then. So also I take a bit of time just to look at uh, what we're currently working on. So SEARCH stands for the Sensor Enabled Automation Robotics and Control Hub. Uh, we're fundamentally a robotics lab, but we've got strong ties with non destructive testing and evaluation, particularly to do with manufacturing, or in my case, uh, asset inspection. Uh, the NGD is done in partnership with the industrial partner, BA Systems, who primarily focus on the manufacture of marine assets, that could be subs or surface vessels. They're obviously very large. Uh, it's a multi-year build process, very long service life, and NDT is prevalent for the entire build and service life. Um, there's a lot of um, the inspections carried out inside are done manually. Um, I focus on ultrasonics and phase in particular. But there's such many methods, radiography, visual, a whole array. Um, and there is commercial products available to assist inspectors in carrying out these um, inspections. Um, and they are currently used on site. However, they're often built for a very specific purpose. And so when we're looking at our, kind of, our systems, such as one lower right, I'll talk about that at the end. Um, we need to kind of develop more sophisticated systems, more general purpose that could be applied for a broad spectrum of um, different tasks. So yeah, so the, the, the ideas behind our systems are to improve the accident and repeatability of inspections, uh, improve health and safety of personnel working on large assets. They're often multiple stories high to access the areas of interest. They need to use scaffolding, gantry systems, or ropes and harnesses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the, the conducting remote accurate inspections to the current standards is, is the, the goal. Mm -hmm. Reducing the inspection time and reducing the inquired ND tool set. Um, because there's such large stock, just such a massive array of equipments needed to fully assess them, uh, properly assess them. Uh, but for the paper that was submitted, it's particularly these two points that we're kind of focusing on. So the usage case is involved in the receipt inspection of steel plate. So at the very early stage, essentially the raw material comes in on site. Um, they essentially just do a quality check just to make sure it's the standard and they are receiving what they're receiving before it goes through to the rest of the yard of cutting, welding, rolling. Um, Correct manually with a, just a uh, a twin element uh, ultrasonic transducer, it's done by hand on various plate sizes. It's quite a laborious task. It's not really a nice one. It's in an open handed hanger. So, in you know, northern England on a horrible wet December day, it's not the, the best place to be. So, quickly in and out is the goal. Uh, and it's really, a, it's an area that could benefit a lot from, from robotic and especially in terms of play improvements, access to but the challenges that we faced, the specific inspection pattern, it's not too relevant for the actual running of the system, which we're going to talk about, but essentially the orange uh, shaded areas are scans for laminations and inclusions, and the red crosses are gauge thickness measurements. Um, it's an active working environment, so that large magnetic crane, the big yellow crane, can be operated at any time. There's personnel of high vis clothing. Um, and also because it's related to UK events, the sensitivity of security concerns, really meaning that we couldn't use like broad spectrum measurements of the hangar itself. To, or the plate store, so refer to it, for measurements to use things like SLAM and scan ratching, your more usual robot position uh, systems. And thus we're kind of limited to the local environment of just taking measurements from the plate itself. So it's just, you know, it's a kind of self similar uh, planar uh, minimal feature uh, you know, environment taking measurements from. But a proposed system, and it is that box, and right, I'm not a product design engineer, hence it is a box. But um, it's a system capable of self-navigating around the plate um, and incorporates integrated sensors for relative position, which is the camera affixed to the top. And absolute position is achievable, but you need to use a second sensor, um, which wasn't the focus of the paper, so it's not in here. But it is in the video in the next slide. But the, the focus is on the primary sensor, which is an RGB depth sensing camera. So the way it functions is uh, quite simply just the pattern of like what the kind of camera's seeing, what the color's seeing is. We're just tracking the edges of the plate. The red is the parallel edge. It's perpendicular, and um, that's the LiDAR unit. But this is all coming from the depth sensing camera. And we're just trying to achieve uh, really trying to maintain a 200 mil position from the edge of the plate. And from that, we could then adjust it, adjust our, our actual ultrasonic sensors to be on the areas for inspection. Essentially, when it's the end of the plate, it triggers a maneuver, turn, follow the edge. 
at heart, it's an edge tracking algorithm. It's something that you might see in like a robotics lab for university. It's it's just a kind of novel um, implementation of it. But to get to the stage, uh, we need to process the data. We've got a lot of point cloud data, too much to, to process quickly. So we reduce that, we crop it down. Um, a good thing about point clouds as well is that it's, it's more difficult to you know infer the, what's going on in the image with an actual camera as well. You would maybe be able to tell what, more what's going on on site. So for a security concern, it's a little bit more preferable. Uh, at this stage, we can work out, well, we've got the floor, plate, some of the crawler elements in the point cloud, but we can match the plane of we know roughly where our plate is because of the position of the camera. We can then essentially measure the angle of the plate, which refers to the camera, um, translate and rotate that so that it aligns with the crawler frame. And from this position, we can then take you know, proper measures. We do a secondary crop as well, sorry, so that we can just have the positions for the plate itself. And here we can take useful measurements. So what we essentially do is the camera, because of this position, can't quite see the edge of the plate. So we're tracking the edge essentially 100 points by taking just strips of point cloud um, splitting that into sections and then just parsing through, find the maximum point, do a check of the next section. If it's empty, then we know we have to large. So that was for both the uh, perpendicular edge ahead and the parallel edge. So once we track these 100 points, uh, we can project back. We know of this distance from the color origin to the projected edge point. We're being, trying to maintain that 200 mil. And then we can also have this relative skew of the crawler um, with uh, reference to the, to the edge of the plate. We then apply basically a target system where we essentially are telling the crawler to aim for a point 200 mils from the edge of the plate, 150 mil ahead. Um, it's it's uh, relatively simple on that side. It's just basic trigonometry. Um, and I said, and we just implement proportional control. So the proportional element of a PID controller is, is all really needed. Uh, we validate this through um, some experiments in the lab. Uh, the actual hanger is an open-ended one, so there's a light gradient. And also the material that we're really looking for on site is carbon steels. So our focus was on steel, but we also looked at paper and aluminium just to see different surface conditions, uh, selectivity coefficients and stuff, um, and a range of, of, of light levels. Uh, so we do that statically, just picking up and, uh, well, picking up and, and, and replacing the crawler, taking measurements within a Vicon uh, motion capture kind of cell, so it's a measurement volume. So we use little reflective tags on the plate and on the crawler itself. That's the absolute position for both. You can then work out the relative position and compare that to the relative position um, inferred by the camera. Uh, and for the dynamic testing, we essentially engage the, the locomotion side of things and let it do a lap of the plate, essentially. So we're looking at the root mean square of the edge estimation, the skew estimation. We get pretty good results for our main concern, which is the steel at the various low, medium, high light levels to represent the back of the plate store, the middle, the front. Um, less so for the for the edge estimations for very low light and for paper, but uh, the skew for those is pretty good, but for aluminium, because it's reflective, it was not very good at all. So it would not be recommended for use in that environment. And the dynamic test side of things, the, in this map, we see the, the, the black points represent the uh, crawl position as measured by the Vicon camera uh, system. And then the blue points represent the edges of the plate. So during this run, um, we recorded it, the either an accurate uh, crawl position of 5.7 mil with the absolute position system, the LIDAR unit in, you can actually size the place to point L, 8 mil, and you can then subsequent plan and inspection path. Um, so we predict that we could um, really have the inspection time for a 20 by five meter plate. There's improved inspection repeatability with a system like this. Seamless digital records, because it's only done by pen and paper, but then you remove that element a bit, and it matches the human level of accuracy. And that's the summary of the paper really itself. Um, but we've kind of, we've moved on to more complex systems now, which I'll briefly just mention. In the last little bit, and um, look at more complex localization tasks and also looking at complex geometry. So, this is the system that we're kind of moved on to, um, which will hopefully be able to be more a bit more general purpose than that first crawler system uh, and be applicable to a range of uh, inspection scenarios. So, there's a magnetic uh, conformal base with a, a miniature robotic arm attached to that. It's not highlighted, but there's a force torque sensor on the end vector of the arm and attached to that. A sensor is a phase to the ultrasonic probe. Um, we also have in this sense the RGB camera as well. Um, and really the geometries that we're looking at are these types of saddle welds. So they're a bit more complex, the 3D geometry, and accessing this would be uh, would be well, access and maneuver around this is a lot more of a challenge than would be on the on the plate itself. So situational awareness is a massive um, <laughs> the 
that this is a, a really important point uh, for our system when concerned it needs to work remotely, possibly up to you know, 20, 30, 40 meters, and then also needs to up, uh, up, well, be in keeping with the standards for the inspection on site. So it has to be um, a, certain, you know, a certain level of accuracy in terms of when we're collecting that phase of the radiator during the scan. This is a brief, um, was it also the saddle, um, the saddle kind of, this is a, a small sample in our lab. It would be much larger in reality. We're also looking at pipe inspection as well. So potentially in the hulls of ships, um, potentially in the internal structures as well. But um, we're hopefully going to do some, on, we're going to get our system hopefully together uh, towards the middle of next year, then hopefully implement it and do some on-site trials thereafter. As a brief little summary of how this kind of system works, this is an example where we're using the point cloud to uh, point cloud of the camera to uh, estimate the radius of the pipe. We're then inferring the normals from that. The arm then approaches to an approximate position where it then slowly approaches, the force torque sensor engages, and then we balance the probe, make sure that there's proper coupling. And then at the lower left this here, we can see the, the phase array um, feed. Um, so that's one element. Uh, also, I should mention that this is a passive inspection. So from the point cloud, a user would implement what would slightly start and end points. So we're just passively collecting data, which for a system like this, there's now two things to monitor. There's vehicle position, there's also probe position. Um, so the, one of the current research purposes of research that I can just conducted was looking at the feedback of this phase three data to then position the probe. So you could generally approach the area of interest with the crawler and then use the phase three data to have fine adjustments to make sure that you're within um, within the industry standards. So in a paper that's recently, but it's in early access in IEEE Open Journal Instrumentation and Measurement, essentially how we can process this phase three data using simple image, uh, image morphology techniques to essentially remove the noise or, or, or the kind of signals that we would see from the uh, payment material. So we can see our well profile uh, in a raw phase three. This is how it would look on the screen with the equipment that's used on site, just by processing it through some Pretty, you know, simple uh, morphological algorithms. We can remove the noise of the data um, around the world itself, and then leave it basically with just um, just really the, the kind of profile of the world. And from that, we can then infer the position. Uh, the reason why we want to use the phasery elements of it is because there's no cap on this weld. You can use laser seam trackers to track the apex of a weld cap. Uh, without that, and without the kind of visual indications. Uh, to see there's some here through polishing but not enough for us to get an accurate position we did there was you know there's a lot of potential to use the, the phaser data because we're already collecting that and thus there's not really anything extra we need to measure we can just use the, the data that's already available to us so to really summarize i introduced the research group search talked about the publication which was robotic positioning of quality assurance how we can process the point cloud data a novel localization algorithm and how we evaluate that in the different organizations to achieve uh, uh, crawler accuracy to a dynamic test in a 5.7 mil and just briefly went over some of our more complex localization problems at the end of it. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, you're very happy.